Jeremy as Cook here, and today I'll be showing off how I made this Twitter activated Zelda heart container. So follow along and see how I made it. Yes, that's right. I made a Twitter activated Zelda heart container. As for how, why I made this, I'll discuss that a little bit at the end. But the first step in actually making this was to draw it out on site, which is kind of like an AutoCAD clone. Once I had the pixels drawn out, I transferred it over to acrylic, wet acrylic, as well as two layers of MDF, half inch MDF. Top layer would let everything shine through and the bottom layer would help hold up all the electronics. This ended up being just enough space for everything. I initially thought I'd use a Raspberry Pi Zero and some LED lights on the bottom, but things turned out a little bit differently. After that was all laid out, I cut it out on my MDF. This is actually the top layer. I pocketed the inside, which wasn't the most efficient way to do this, but it worked out pretty well to put a, put a line between the, the bottom and the top and cut out the sides as well. This design turned out pretty well, but I actually didn't accommodate for the sharp edges on the acrylic piece, while the MDF actually had radiuses on it, on it. So that meant I had to actually make it later and do quite a bit of work with the Dremel tool as well. That's the bottom there, cutting out. That made a good, good slot for all the electronics. And of course, I had to do quite a bit of deep deburring with a file afterwards. Made pretty, pretty quick work of the acrylic sheet, the white acrylic. Left the blue top on there for quite some time just to protect it, keep it smooth. Punched it out there and you can see there's where it's supposed to fit. There's me doing a little bit of work with the Dremel tool that took quite a bit. So make sure to accommodate for that in your designs. The other thing I did was I put holes in the top and the bottom so that I could put neodymium magnets on them inside of them. I attached them with hot glue, which as you'll see in just a second, turned out to be not quite strong enough because for better or worse, these kind of magnets are extremely strong. But the, the good thing is you, you put the hot glue on the top as well as the bottom, it just kind of lines itself nicely. It's got a little bit of slack. So you can see here, it just pulls right out. Now my, my initial solution was to just glue it again and pull it out from the side. That does work, but another thing I did was just put smaller magnets on the top, which was the, uh, the better solution of the two, and hasn't hasn't pulled out yet, and still still holds it pretty nicely. There's everything fitting together, so mechanically, I had a design that looked like it would work pretty well. We'll see what the electronics turn out to be. So there's my diagram for the electronics. I had 12 volt DC coming in to a transformer, goes to the D1 Mini, which signals two LED strips using a pair of 2N222 transistors. And there's the results. Unlike some of my other projects, I actually laid this out on a breadboard beforehand just to make sure I could, it would all work okay before I soldered it. So of course, always a good idea. And as it turns out, once I had everything on the perf board, it worked pretty much, pretty much like it should. There I am laying everything out inside the heart, making sure it'll fit okay. There's the transistors, there's the power supply, as well as the transformer. Some requisite soldering, a little bit of work with the clippers. And I had a small circuit board that looked like it would work pretty well, and did work pretty well. A little bit of paint on the, on the outside of the heart, made for the kind of the border. As I would find out later with some research, it's actually from Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link, because the first one apparently had a little bit of gold in it as well. I then took the blue protective covering off and it turned out to look just like I thought it would. Glad it was actually the right color. But I still didn't know quite how it would look with the red LEDs shining through. Had to cut a hole for the power supply and there it is. All these extra cuts obviously I could have done if I thought of it, but hindsight's 2020. Those holes I'm cutting there with the Dremel tool are actually let the let the wires pass from one side to another. There goes the the transformer, and there's the power cable. And then I attached the LED strips to the side. These are just single color red LED strips, not the WS2812 that you might be familiar with. You can see it there; it's pulsing red nicely, so that. That's exactly what I'd hoped for. And then I'm hooking up the second second strip there using lever nuts, which I like quite a bit. So 
So after some more some more work making sure they attached to the sides, zip ties, little hot glue, etc., the, the build was pretty much done. I did put some holes in the top just for cooling because it seemed to be getting hot. Code for the board was produced in the Arduino IDE, and the important part of this was if this, then that. So if it sees a certain search term, it'll then pass that information onto Adafruit.io, which then could pass that onto my Wemos D1 mini board, ESP8266 board. I'll put a bit more information about the terms that I used in the description so that if you want to message my heart thing, you can, you can do that and in theory, turn it on in my office. I'll also put some information about the code that I used in this build. So if you want to build something similar, it shouldn't be too hard. For now though, check out this demonstration of it in action. So as you've been watching this video, you probably probably wondering what's the deal with this shirt. I'll put a link to my to my video where I actually make this. Uh, it was kind of a failed experiment in bleach t-shirt. But as far as the Zelda heart, I actually had the idea to make this. It was for a friend and his his wife's for a friend of mine for Valentine's Day. He was going to give this to his wife as kind of a present. It's going to be activated based on the location of his cell phone. It would have been really really cool, but. End up that didn't quite work out right and end up getting really busy with work. So that that's just fine, but that also meant that I had to use the Wemos D1 mini board until, instead of the more extensive setup that we had we had come up with earlier. Either way, I was pretty proud of myself for being able to do it. So big big thanks to Becky Stern and her internet uh, things tutorial. That was very helpful and Adafruit of course and uh, you know everybody else I guess. So and, and Alex of course for the inspiration. So Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe, give it a like, leave a comment, bad comment, you know, whatever. I'll, uh, I respond to all of it, at least for now. So, Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.